Well, here we are, Anzac Day 2021, and uh, this year we'll get our Anzac Day, and we've got a couple of really special people here who have actually been uh, part of our school, but also served in the uh, in the Navy, in the Australian Navy. So Keith, who's teaching at our school at the moment, and Al Fenny, who's a past pupil of our school and president of the Shire Band as well, uh, were both actually servicemen in the Australian Navy. So Keith, when did you... Uh, Get, get involved in the Navy? Uh, well, I finished high school in 1991 and I joined straight into the Navy. I left in January 92 and I went to a base in Western Sydney known as HMAS Narimba and it's no longer there, they closed it down. And I did my apprenticeship in electronic technical communications, it was called. Yeah, so sort of like electrical engineer, I suppose, is it? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. just mostly fixing broken equipment. Yeah, and what sort of boats were you on? Did you get the sail around as uh, well? In 1997, I joined HMAS Melbourne, which is a uh, guided missile frigate, which is uh, just recently got decommissioned and is now serving in the Chilean Navy. In the Chilean Navy? In the Goodness Chilean me. Navy. They bought it off the government and, and sailed her back. Yeah. Uh, across the uh, Pacific yeah. and so it's living to fight another day hopefully. Fantastic. And what sort of things did you get to do on the ship? Did you visit some great places? Oh and, uh... absolutely. I, I had some fantastic port visits. I think my most memorable one was New Zealand. Uh, we pulled into Auckland and uh, a group of us hired a car and went down to Rotorua and did some whitewater rafting and some luge carting. It was great. I returned to the ship with a lot less skin than I left with. Fantastic. And uh, as part of your service too, you probably did a lot of things for the community and for the... Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we were obviously involved in Anzac Days. Every year we would have to go to a local RSL and, and provide um, parade staff for, for the um, services. Um, but in 2000 I went to East Timor and our ship was involved in putting a roof back on a school in East Timor and um, painting a hospital, um, which is pretty good because as soon as that roof was on, the kids were straight back in, learning back in a classroom with a roof on it. Uh, but before that, they were learning with a school with no roof because yeah. uh, their roof was uh, destroyed. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's just one of the things, I suppose, of the many, many thousands of things that you contributed to us as a oh, society with. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And had a great time sailing around the absolutely. world. Absolutely. Yeah. Best time of my life. Yeah. And Al, you were an ex-Rosebud primary school kid and then to Dramana Secondary. That's right, Dramana Technical School. Dramana Technical back in those days. Yes. And you probably got involved in the Navy because of a different sort of path you took on. So when you were at school, you learned some instruments and I things. learned the trumpet when I was at school. Yeah. And straight after school, I went into the Navy band. Into the Navy band. Now that's something that's fairly interesting. We used to have the Navy band come out to school and play for us, actually. Many well, years we, we did lots of school concerts. School concerts. Yes. And as part of the Navy band, did you get to go on a ship and that too? I did, back in 1983. I was on a ship called HMAS Stalwart. It's no longer with us now. Got decommissioned in about 1987, I guess. Right, there's a bit of a bit of a trend here. You blokes must be old because both the ships you were on are gone. Yes, <laughs> yes that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and, and we did one trip overseas for three months up three to months. Asia's. Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, it was great. Fantastic. Yes. And uh, some of the highlights, Al, you probably some played at some terrific events. Well, you mentioned HMAS Melbourne. I was in the band when we de decommissioned HMAS Melbourne, the aircraft carrier. Yes, before my time. That's but, right, yeah, yes. absolutely. And so I'd, I'd never been on a ship then. I was only young and this ship was huge. Yeah. And um, we, I was in the band, involved in the band for the... Um, 1982 Commonwealth Games. Yeah, and that's terrific. The, and the opening closing ceremony. The opening ceremony. closing ceremony. Yeah. That was fantastic, yes. marching in those opening and closing yeah, ceremonies. Yeah, fantastic. It was yeah, great. Not bad for a little bloke from Rosebud Primary that's School. Right, yes. And uh, I, you did some few grand finals and things too. Oh, you? yes, I was, I've been to a few grand finals where we've marched before the, the grand final and played Vance Australia Fair, and, and I've been to the Grand Prix and marched on the track. To play the Advance Australia Fair there as well. And yeah. 
So, yes. Yeah, so some amazing opportunities from being in our services and we're so thankful. And on our Anzac Day, you know, we pay tribute to people like Keith and Al who've uh, served our country so well as part of our uh, Navy, or Australian Navy and Australian Armed Forces. So uh, thanks very much, boys, and thank you for your continued contributions right. uh, to our community and our school. It's thank great. You. In 1914, when war broke out, the First World War, Mr Charles Perrin was the principal of Rosebud Primary School. He enlisted in 1915. Other local men who joined and enlisted in those days are on our honour roll, and that's up in, our, up in our office. Mr Perrin, unfortunately, was killed in 1918 and didn't return from the war. And he's one of the many, many thousands of people, or millions of people, who we honour on Anzac Day. On the morning of April 25th, 1915, Australian and New Zealand troops landed under extreme fire at Gallipoli. And it was then, and in the violent campaign that followed, that the Anzac tradition was forged. The elements of that tradition have inspired an offer offered an enduring example to later generations of Australians. Each year we pay homage not only to those original Anzacs, but to all those who died or were disabled in their service of their country. They enrich our nation's history. Their hope was for the freedom of mankind, and we remember with pride their courage, their compassion, and their comradeship. They served on land and sea and in the air and in many places throughout the world. Not only do we honour the memory of those Australians who have fallen in battle, we share the sorrow of those who have mourned them and all who have been the victims of armed conflict. On this day, we remember with sympathy those Australians who have suffered as prisoners of war and those who, because of war, have had their lives shortened or handicapped. We recall such staunch friends and allies, and especially those from the first Anzac Day. May we and our successors prove worthy of their sacrifice. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. lest we forget.
Golden.